Hi everyone, and welcome to the first video of the Fundamentals of Robotics series. In this video and the coming videos, you will become familiarized with the fundamentals of robotics, including kinematics, mechanics, planning, and control. In most of the robotics courses that I had in the past, the professor usually covered one or more of these topics, and more advanced topics like planning and control are usually left out. It's my personal opinion that a course in robotics should have all of these topics in tandem, and leaving out one or more of these topics will hinder the learning. In these videos and in these series, we will use free robot simulators to implement most of the methods discussed. Both robot arms and mobile robots will be covered. Textbooks that I used are Modern Robotics, Mechanics, Planning, and Control by Frank Park and Kevin Lynch, and a Mathematical Introduction to Robotic Manipulation by Murray Lee and Sastry. The second book is a little bit advanced, and it's usually used in advanced courses like in graduate school, but I will try my best to make these concepts as easy as uh, possible for you guys to understand. Just a quick heads up that in these series, a modern approach to robotics uh, will be covered. For instance, we will use screw theory um, to find the kinematics of robots instead of the usual and conventional methods like that with hard work. The modern approach has many advantages that you will see as we go along. All right? If you're ready, let's get started. Okay, a robot consists of links and joints. Every joint connects exactly two links. This is my 2DOF planar robot that I'm going to show you guys these concepts. Actuators, which can be, for instance, electric motors like the one in my hand. This is the DC motor. It will provide forces and torques that will cause the links to move. It's ideal that the actuators are of lower speed and high torque, but available actuators have speeds in the range of thousands of RPMs. And a speed reduction and torque amplification using gears are required. Different sensors can also be equipped on the robot. For instance, in order to measure the position of the joints, for instance, here we want to measure the uh, joint angles, encoders are installed on the joints. Tachometers can be used to measure velocity and force torque sensors are needed when the robot is exerted force on the environment, such as the task of riding on the board with a chalk. Vision sensors such as cameras, are also very common to localize objects in the environment of the robots. An end effector, um, or gripper, or hand, we can call it, will be mounted on the last link for grasping and manipulating objects. It's like a hand, uh, and it's used for grasping and manipulating objects. Robots can be open chain, like this one, this robot is an open chain robot, it's serial, and it has different lengths. Or they can be closed loops, like this four bar linkage um, that I have here. So suppose that the two ends of the robot are pinned to the ground, so this four bar linkage uh, creates a closed loop. So it's a closed loop robot. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the introduction video. In the next video, we will answer the question of where is the robot by developing an understanding of the configuration of the robot. See you in the next video. 